Model steam engines top tip time part 49. The reason why I make this top tip time series is just to clarify certain aspects of what I do. In this one I'm piping a steam plant. These are compilation videos but the clips are not just taken from my original videos, they are edited and they get to the point straight away. This one for instance mainly deals with piping but there is a short steam test at the end. Just in case you're wondering why my voice sounds like this and then when the video starts it sounds different, that's for a couple of reasons. One is, now I'm older, my voice sounds different, but the main reason is, at the time I made this video, for instance, I used an overhead broadcast type microphone. Now I use an up close and personal Neumann U87, a really high grade microphone. And these days I speak to the microphone which is a lot closer to me. Plus the room that I do the voiceovers in is very much acoustically treated, whereas when I made this video I was in an ordinary room which was bigger than this one. The original source material for this video was made in 2018. This device is called a chuff pot, and this gadget is designed specifically to amplify the sound of the exhaust of a steam engine, but they're designed for very small steam engines. Small toy steam engines such as Mammoth or Willesco would be great with one of these. It would make it sound like a much bigger engine. Because this steam plant has two engines, I need to fit a T-piece into the piping circuit. On the screen at the moment is the original steam inlet fitting for the chuff pot. It's designed to take a piece of silicone rubber tubing, but I need it to accept the T-piece on a commercial union. You can clearly see what I'm doing here. I've coated it in some Loctite equivalent, and now by holding the fitting in the lathe chuck and using a piece of brass bar in the tailstock, I'm pressing the coned union into place on the chuff pot's inlet pipe, and even without the Loctite, it's a very tight fit in the first place, so this isn't going to come off. There's a little bit of urgency now to clean off any traces of the Loctite, because I don't want it to stick the nut to the union cone. The construction of this chuff pot is quite clever. A bush on the chimney is threaded to accept this special inlet union, which also secures the internal parts of the unit, the part that makes the noise. Quite a good design, that's why I didn't want to butcher it by silver soldering my fitting on the end of it. Just for the record, I wouldn't recommend Loctite in union cones onto the end of pipes on the steam inlet side where the steam is at high pressure, but on the exhaust side, there's negligible pressure, so it is acceptable, but it's not something I'm going to get into the habit of doing any time soon. Now I have to decide which way round the chimney goes. Does the T-piece go at the front of the plant, where it's very visible? No, I think I'll have the T-piece at the back of the plant, so it's not quite so visible. I'm going to take the black paint off it as well and polish it up to make it match the chuff pot. The exhaust piping is slightly thicker than the inlet piping. The inlet piping is 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, this is 3 16 of an inch in diameter. And currently I'm bending the 3 16 pipe to take the steam from the Vulcan beam engine to the chuff pot. Bending this part in the right place is of paramount importance, so I'm going to mark it with a felt tip pen. If I mark it here, this will be the centre of the bend. I generally bend the piping completely by hand. Over the years I've evolved a simple technique that works. You bend the pipe between your fingers whilst putting a lot of pressure on the pipe with your fingers and you bend it past 90 degrees and then you bend it back a little bit. And if by bending the pipe past 90 degrees the pipe kinks, discard it and use another piece. In reality this seldom happens because I've done this for many many years and like everything else it's just a case of practice. Get a piece of scrap brake pipe. You can get a full roll of 3 16 of an inch diameter brake pipe from just about any automotive discount store. So buy a roll and bend it into all sorts of shapes. Once you've bent an entire roll of brake piping into fancy shapes, your fingers might be a bit sore, but at least you'll figure out how to do it, and the sun will come out, and the birds will start singing, and everything in the garden is lovely. About 35 years ago, I bought this Barco adjustable spanner, and here I'm showing how I use it, and you will notice that frequently I rotate the screw that adjusts the jaws to make sure that the jaws apply even pressure squarely onto the nut. If you use a barco spanner like this, keep it tight on the nuts, you will find that it will never round them. 
After cutting the pipe to length, bending it to shape, etc., and silver soldering it and cleaning it up, you will then find that it doesn't look too good. It won't be as straight and perfect as you thought it was going to be. So what you have to do is tighten the nuts at both ends of the pipe and ease the piping into the correct position. And if you can't get the piping into the correct position, then, really speaking, you're going to have to redo it. And don't forget, copper work hardens, so once you've bent the pipe into these complex shapes, it's going to not unbend and rebend very well. Try it yourself, get an old piece of copper pipe, bend it at 90 degrees, unbend it, bend it at 90 degrees again, and usually by the third time, it's not looking very good at all. So what you have to do is anneal the pipe, which means you heat it to a red colour, then quench it in some water, and this makes the copper pipe very malleable once again. But bear in mind, this is not a permanent fix. After a couple of bending operations in the same place, it's a good idea to anneal the copper. Here's a shot of the plant, with the piping more or less complete, but I'm going to leave it on a cliffhanger. Look at the pipe going into the chuff pot on the right-hand side. The bend is not right and the pipe is too long. Oh no, my apologies for upsetting anyone's OCD. Please excuse me while I go and lay in a dark room for 12 hours and take my medication. I remove the gas pipe from the small tank on the baseboard and just push the silicone rubber tubing over the pipe union on the end of the pipe and this will seal it fine. The first thing to do is to pump some water into the boiler and for this I'm using the small attached hand pump. Right, the gas is lit. This is a carbon monoxide alarm. I have it fitted just over the bench to the right hand side. And the last time I mentioned this carbon monoxide alarm, I was inundated with keyboard warrior experts telling me I was doing it wrong, saying that I should mount it lower down because carbon monoxide is heavier than air, etc, etc, etc. When I googled this, Google said it was an urban myth, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Besides which, if carbon monoxide is heavier than air, it will pool about at the bottom of the workshop near the floor, and I don't fall over much these days, I take more water with it. The burner seems to be very quiet on this boiler, I'm wondering if the jet's blocked, but anyway, I'll just leave it and see. What is this steam coming out of the chimney? Well, it's just condensation. Whenever you light a gas burner, or a coal fire for that matter, inside a boiler, you get a lot of condensation. Then as the condensation starts to boil away with the heat, you get a little bit of steam, which is quite encouraging. It tells you that the gas burner is at least providing some heat. Time for another completely common sense health and safety notice. When using a gas fired steam boiler inside a building, make sure the building is well ventilated. And if you're using a coal fired boiler, then you don't want to be doing it inside anyway. There's no pressure yet, so it's a good time to fill the displacement lubricators. This is very important. Always drain them first by undoing the tap at the bottom, and that lets the water out, then fill them with steam oil and put the cap back on. Displacement lubricators are a really good way of lubricating cylinders on small steam engines. In the case of this steam plant, the pair of displacement lubricators are situated on the turret. They're actually screwed into the main steam turret. Often these sort of things are screwed to the engines, but they can look a bit ugly. Displacement lubricators work anywhere in the steam line really, apart from attached to the boiler, that wouldn't be too smart. But the point is that what they do is condense some steam to water, which falls to the bottom of the lubricator tank, and displaces some oil that's pushed out into the steam line. When the steam pressure in the boiler has reached about 30 pounds per square inch, blow the whistle and this is to clear the condensate from the steam pipe and as you can see there's lots of water coming out of it. As the water clears the whistle's note gets louder and better. These steam engines are not fitted with drain cocks so I'm very carefully opening the valve to see what happens and it's not a major issue. Sometimes you get a hydraulic lock at each end of the cylinder but this is not happening on the Cyclops engine. Before I run the engine continuously, I'm going to make sure there's plenty of oil on all the oiling points of the engine. Wherever anything is moving, it needs some oil. In this clip, the piston is at the bottom of the stroke, so it won't start. I left the steam valve open, so some steam gets through the engine to keep it warm. But now as the steam pressure's increased in the boiler, I think I'll turn it off. I've just noticed this is quite interesting. As I open the steam valve, the safety valve blows off. Purely coincidental.
I've taken the chuffing apparatus out of the chuffing chuffing pot because it was far too loud. It's up to the owner of the steam plant as to whether he wants to put it back in. And I have a steam leak. And no, it's not the union, it's my bad silver soldering. I was trying to be quite economic with this wire silver solder that I don't normally use, and I'm not going to use it again. I prefer the sticks of silver solder. It's a very simple fix though. I just removed the pipe and re-silver soldered it. That's it for this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.